Hello, good evening. I hope you've been enjoying um, learning the, the different doctrines. Tonight, we're going to talk about the doctrine of salvation. And I don't know if you remember the word, it's soteriology. Okay, so now I've already explained in the last session about doctrine, about this doctrine. So now that that's done, I want to focus on explaining what it means and the definition of it. There's a few things that I want to explain. It's important that you understand what these words mean so that you know why it flows together and why Jesus did this for us. So I'm just going to define these five words. These five words are important. The first one is faith. You see the word faith here? And then the second is repentance, justification, sanctification, and this is a sign for it, and then adoption. So all these five words I'm going to define. Okay. Faith. I just want to explain what this means. It's just really simple word. It just means to believe or to trust. And so that's what faith means. You can trust or believe false teaching. You can. Faith means to believe. It doesn't matter, it just means to believe. But we believe and know that Jesus Christ is the Savior. That's what we believe. But the word faith means to believe and to trust. And the best verse to show this is in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. It says, In whom ye also trusted, after that, so it's saying in whom, which is Jesus, so in Jesus, ye, whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom, Jesus, also after that ye believed. Ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So that is faith. It means to believe and to trust. And it explains that in this verse. You may be wondering, where does the word faith start? How does that, how did that appear? Where does that word faith start? The best example of this, and it's a clear verse about when faith came in, was in Romans chapter 10, verse 17. The verse says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You need to determine to have faith, to believe, to trust. And how do you start having faith? That's by hearing. 
Hearing what? Where does that come from? The Word of God. And so the Word of God, as it's told to you, preached to you, or if someone tells you and teaches you about the Word of God, you meditate on that. You think about it. And then you decide, yes, I want to trust. I believe. And it comes from the Word of God. Now, if you can imagine one person, you know, yelled at me. They should not force and tell people about, you yelled at me saying, you should not force and tell people about your religion, about what you believe. And I said, no, no, no. If they ask me, I'm going to explain. I'm going to explain about Jesus Christ and about God. But this person said, but you can't force them from yourself. And I said, no, I'm not. It's from the Bible. What I'm explaining is from the Bible. And they said, no, you can't use your opinions from the Bible. You can't tell them your opinions. That person themselves needs to get that idea on their own. Learn it by themselves. No one else can tell them. No one else. I looked at this person and I said, "Uh, no. Someone can tell them. If no one tells them, they can't have faith. They can't believe. And I said, there's a verse here in Romans chapter 10, verse 14, which says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So it doesn't make sense if there's no preaching or or nothing to tell them, no one to tell them, the person can just all of a sudden say, hey, I believe, but no one told them anything. But if someone tells them, they realize, oh, you know, I want to believe this. And that was me. When I was young, you know, I didn't know until someone came to me and explained to me about Jesus. And I realized, yes, I want to believe. So I, you, I had to be preached at or told to, to believe. And that comes from the word of God. Someone needs to share the gospel. That is faith. That's how it starts. Now the question is, what is faith about? What is, what is it about? You know, is faith Hindu? Is it faith in um, water baptism? Faith of, there's so many different religions out there. So what is it? The first one is faith about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the gospel is the good news. So the good news about Jesus Christ, that is what faith is talking about. And there's a famous verse, John chapter 3, verse 16, that says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
this gospel about Jesus is about Jesus Christ, about the Son of God. God sent Jesus to come down here on earth to help us so that we can look up and believe on him so that we don't have to go to hell, but so that he can give us everlasting life forever and ever. There's another verse in Romans chapter 1 verse 16 that says that talks about the gospel of Christ. It says, "For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first and also to the Greek." So this gospel is told and explained about salvation, about Jesus Christ, so that we can believe. And this is for everyone, the Jews, the Greek, everyone. Everyone needs to hear this. We should be excited and not be ashamed to tell people about Jesus Christ. And that spreads faith. And other people will be able to believe and trust in Christ. Because we're telling people. And that's what we're supposed to do. The second thing is, you know, faith is about the gospel of Jesus Christ. But faith is also about his death, burial, and resurrection. And that's key. We need to explain the gospel to people and tell them that our faith is that we believe that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose again. And you can find that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 and 4. It says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. So I received this and then I gave it to you. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. So the scriptures is the word of God. And we get faith from the Bible. about From the scriptures. From what's told to us. And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So first, he died for our sins. Second, he was buried. And third, he rose again. He rose again the third day. So died, buried, and rose. If you believe on that, that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is faith, believing in this. And then third is believing that Jesus is the Son of God. That Jesus is God. that God was manifested in the flesh. So it means it was shown. If there was no flesh, if there was no flesh, if you took that away and God just came down, his his glory would be too much that we would die. Would be it would be done. So Jesus needed to come in the flesh and was born as a babe, and his mother was Mary. So God put the Holy Spirit in her, and that and she was able to give birth to Jesus. 
And as Jesus rose, he was equal to man so that he could help us. And then as he died and buried, was buried and rose again, he did that so that he, we were able to be saved. I'm a sinner, and I'm punished to go to hell. But Jesus was innocent. Jesus had nothing wrong with him. He had no sin. But he came down to be equal to us so that he can help us. Let me give you an example of something else. You have a grandson with his grandfather. They're sitting side by side watching TV. And as they're watching TV, they hear a knock. So the grandson looks over and he walks over to that sound and he looks around and he looks down and he sees on the ground a bird lying there and the bird was hurt. The bird tried to go through the window and hit the window and fell and got hurt. So his grandson says, hey, grandfather, come here, come here. So the grandfather comes over and he goes, well, what happened? And he sees this bird and he says, I'm sorry, but I can't help him. And the boy says, I wish that I could become like a bird so that I could help this bird. That's an example of how infinite God is. And us as people, we're way below that. But God sent Jesus to come down and meet us where we're at to help us so that we can be saved. We're hurt. We're hurt from sin. And we need help. And so Jesus was willing to help us. And that's why it says God was manifested in the flesh. It's true. The verses are there. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, it says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. So God was manifested in the flesh and justified in the spirit. Seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. That's who Jesus is. Jesus was manifested was born as a human, but it's God. And then he rose, and the Holy Spirit said, yes, this is God. And the people looked to him, and the angels looked to him. And Jesus roamed this earth, was patient, and preached, and helped, and said, does anyone believe on me or not? But that's your decision. And people persecuted him, put him on a cross. And Jesus was happy that many people believed on him and rose after he died. Do you believe on that? That's faith. I wasn't there 2,000 years ago. I didn't see Jesus die on the cross. I didn't see what had happened, but I heard about it. I read about it in the Word of God. And from that, I believe that Jesus is God. That's faith. Now, this is faith, and so we need faith. But I'm going to put this on hold and I'm going to give you another word. Rep repentance. 
And I'm signing repentance like this because it's to turn or change. So the definition is to change, or the definition means to change your mind for the better. So you have something that's really bad or worse, and you change it or turn for the better. It's a 180 degree turn where you go from one way and you go completely opposite the other way. For example, you and I were involved in the world we're involved in sin, we, you know, we like being in sin. But then we hear the gospel of Jesus. And we look to this and we're like, hmm, the world or Jesus. And then we decide that we want Jesus and we change. We turn from the world and look to Jesus. Before we rebelled and later we changed and we o were obeying God. Originally we lied and then we changed and now we tell the truth. Originally we didn't believe, but then we changed and we had belief. So that's the thing, it's opposite to change. What does the Bible explain about repentance? There's three things. So us as humans, we have the mind, the emotion, and will. I'm gonna explain and expound on each part. The mind is what your view of sin is. So your view may say, I like sin, it's awesome. It's cool, but later you're told about Jesus Christ and you realize that sin is bad and you don't want sin anymore. And you realize that you want to be clean and you want to go to heaven. You don't want hell anymore. You don't want to be involved in this sin, so you change your mind about sin. I'm going to show you a verse. In Acts chapter 2, verse 37, Peter's preaching here. And he says, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Because before Peter preached and explained that Jesus needed to be crucified, you know, that people didn't care about him. Jesus died for you and loved you. And so they were touched and they asked, well, what shall we do? So the people changed their mind and realized that they didn't want to be mean or to neglect Jesus. So they changed their minds and they wanted to love Jesus. They wanted to believe on Jesus. So they asked, what, what do they do? That is true repentance, to change their minds. The second thing is emotion, which means to have true or real sorrow for sin and a desire for pardon. You realize that you're wrong and that you want forgiveness. And you're like, oh, what do I do? You have this emotion. I'm gonna give you an example. 
verse here says, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. So what does this mean? So being truly godly, you want to be like God. You realize, well, I'm wrong and I want to change. I should hate sin. I should love God. And I should put this aside. But the difference with the world, worldly sorrow is, ah, you know, I'm, I'm lost. I made a mistake, but tomorrow I'm still going to sin. It's fine. It doesn't matter. That's death. But repentance to salvation is when you truly want God. You want to be godly. That's godly sorrow. And the third thing is your will. You have that desire, the change of desire, to change from your glory or self glory, thinking about yourself and changing and wanting God's glory. So here's an example. Luke chapter 15, verse 21 says, and the son said, in, so this is talking about the prodigal son. He made a mistake. And he spent all of his father's money. Then he realized that he needed to go back and meet his father. And when he finally met his father, the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight. And am no more worthy to be called thy son. So I'm going to add to this verse where the next verse says, but I'm worthy to be your son. So the son didn't want to be called a son anymore. He wanted to be a servant. But the father ignored that and said, I'm happy to see you again so he brought him back in and he clothed him and he had a party a celebration because his son was back now the son had true repentance he truly changed he thought about himself in the beginning he wanted money and enjoyment he thought of himself but then he realized that he should be called son. He said, I have shame. I should be a servant. He changed because he wanted the focus to be on God and not on himself. That is repentance. That is repentance of the will. So repentance of the mind, emotion, and will. I have another verse that says he that covereth his sins so sin in, in 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 hiding shall not prosper but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them forsaketh that sin put that sin aside and say I don't want this shall have mercy Wow. You need to have true repentance. Another verse says, For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God.
So Paul wrote this letter to the Thessalonians, to the church in Thessalonica, and applauded them for deciding to change, to change from idolatry, not wanting that, to preferring to serving the true living God. Now, they realize that idolatry or idols are not living. And so they put that aside and decided they prefer to serve God. That is true repentance. And so that's what the definition of repentance means. So you have faith, repentance, I'm going to teach more um, next week. I'm going to teach about justification and sanctification, about being set apart and adoption. So have a good week. And I hope you've enjoyed learning about the doctrine of salvation. Thank you.